I know that you had visions of walking your dog when you brought home a puppy. And a lot of the times that derails really quickly when we realize that puppies are natural pullers and it's really rewarding for them to do so. But we are going to talk about a tool that is going to help accelerate your loose lead walking training today on the McCann Dogs podcast. I'm instructor Shannon. Welcome back to McCann Dogs. The gentle leader is a form of a head halter. Um, think of a, a, a horse or a cow. Uh, you know, we're not going to put a, a, a collar on a horse or a cow and, right. and take them, you know, take them to the stable or wherever we're taking them. Well, and if you do, good luck. Right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's a lot of weight exactly. to have to try to move. Right. Yeah. We want to lead them by a, a halter on their head. Right. And it's the same with the with the halter for the dogs. It works in the same way. They control the head and where the head goes, the rest of the body has to yeah. go. And it's much easier to control a dog by their head than it is to control them by their neck. That's often where their very strong pulling muscles right. are at the base of the neck. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the halter is... Um, it's uh, generally made out of nylon, mm-hmm. and uh, you fit it over the dog's uh, over the dog's nose, and then around the back of their neck, and uh, it it just gives you power steering on the dog. So yeah. it, it makes your life so much easier, especially if you have a very large, strong dog, and you're uh, you know a smaller person or you know a person that just doesn't have the the ability to to hold back all that power. Yeah, absolutely. And like this is coming from a situation where you're quite a small person. Okay. And you've had some you've had some big dogs before, right? Yes, yes. So, have you used the gentle leader with some I, of your dogs? Yes, I definitely have. Yeah. Um, it was a lifesaver when my son Ty was a little boy, and uh, you know he was in a in a stroller in his car- baby carriage. Actually, I could uh, easily control Cowboy, who was a large, tall, very boisterous dog, and push Ty at the same time in his stroller and address to his needs. Perfect. So uh, I found it was a, a true lifesaver. Yeah, when I had yeah young a young child, they really are. I absolutely love the tool, and we believe so strongly in this tool because a, it allows people to get that little bit of a leg up if they're mm-hmm. really struggling with their dog, and for those reasons, you know, we we talked about um, a dog being either really powerful mm-hmm. or a dog being sort of hyper and hard to get their focus. Mm-hmm. And uh, my early experiences with the gentle leader, my first dog Quincy the Rottweiler, mm-hmm. we've talked about Quincy before, and you know she was a extremely powerful dog. Rottweilers are very, very powerful dogs. You know, they have a lot of bulk to them, but they are also bred to be muscly and they're bred to be strong. They're very thick. You know, they've got a lot of power. Mm -hmm. And I think people underestimate the power of a dog. You think, oh, you know, the dog weighs 60 pounds. I weigh, you know, 150. Um, You know, I should be good. But dog's power is very different than, yes. Like I even find uh, like, my little dogs, like my 14 pound Sheltie, like she had some pretty good oomph to her when she wanted to. It's so amazing. It eh? is amazing how strong they are. So, you know, keep in mind that even though they weigh a certain amount, they have far more strength than, than you think they have. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's so important to be able to communicate well with the dog, which is why the gentle leader sort of bridges the gap sometimes between us struggling with our dogs and us getting our dogs to a point where they're focused on us Mm -hmm. and listening and and really starting to build skills and the team is starting to develop you know that this this wonderful relationship that you Mm -hmm. can have with your dogs is often predicated on being able to get their attention when there's distractions there and being able to make your point that just because the distractions are there doesn't necessarily mean that the dog gets to go and investigate or play with or interact with those distractions. I mean, let's face it, they're not always safe things. Right. You know, sometimes the distraction that's across the street, yeah, that dog across the street might be really appealing to my dog Mm -hmm. to go and play with. However, there's traffic on the street. Right. Yeah. So it's very dangerous if my dog has his own head, and especially if he's physically powerful enough to be Mm -hmm. able to drag me. Right. I want to make sure that that is never a possibility. Mm -hmm. I can always take easy control of my dogs. So with Quincy, it was a matter of power. She was so strong that the gentle leader was the great equalizer for us. And I remember struggling in class, and this was before I had joined the apprenticeship program. Mm -hmm. I remember struggling in class and feeling that like powerlessness because she was getting so strong at Mm -hmm. such a young age. And then the gentle leader just really equalized that. It gave me an equal amount of strength to be able to help her 
focus in and realize the skills that she was learning. And then of course I was able to build the value for the skills because I was able to, she was able to mm-hmm. be right. And then things just started to blossom. Right. Yes. My other early association with the gentle leader mm-hmm. was with Jaden and mm-hmm. that was my first toller. Mm-hmm. So a very different scenario with him. It wasn't about the power necessarily mm-hmm. because he was only, I think he was 41 pounds at his heaviest weight mm-hmm. as a, you know, full mature adult. Mm-hmm. So as a puppy, he wasn't a very big puppy, but he was so unfocused and he was incredibly hyper. And he just like would see a piece of fluff move and woo, that was exciting. Mm-hmm. And he was off like a shot. Right, yeah. So I needed something to help calm him a little bit. Right. So with him, that was what, where the gen mm-hmm. leader really shone. Yes. Um, now, we love the gentle leader. Yes, the gentle you know, le- I, I've some, I've had students say to me, Christine, thank you. This yeah. has allowed me to keep my dog. Isn't that amazing? Yes, that was amazing. Someone yeah. felt that you know maybe they couldn't keep their dog, but the gentle yeah. leader allowed them to have that relationship and that you know, it gave her the confidence yeah, that, you know what, I can handle my dog. My dog can't outpower me anymore. Exactly. And so empowering for mm-hmm. somebody who is like, like imagine those emotions for a second. And I just want to dive into this because it, it actually like it, it, it affects me on a visceral level. I just feel this in my gut. And maybe it's because I remember feeling that defeated, right. yes, yes, that defeated feeling with Quincy because mm-hmm. she was so powerful or, you know, with, with Jaden, mm-hmm. you know, again, so wonderful, but so hyper. And I just wasn't making headway and I was feeling defeated with both of those dogs and then along came this tool that didn't solve the problem by any stretch mm-hmm. and we'll get into that right. because I I don't want anybody to think that this is a silver bullet right there it's not a magic no. a magic button that we push if yes. somebody is trying to tell you that there is a magic bullet in dog training they are selling you, uh, uh, they're selling, they might as well be selling you the Brooklyn Bridge. Like it, <laughs> it's not likely to be, there's very few scenarios that I can think of where there's any sort of magic bullet to say, right. hey, you must. Most of the time that would require an incredible amount of foresight. Mm-hmm. So we try to do that, of right. course. Yes. But- we're human and it's impossible to have enough foresight to cover everything. Mm -hmm. So don't look for the magic bullets. Look for things that are going to make your life easier. Right. Yes. And people often want that easy fix. Yeah. And there are no easy fixes. It's dog training. It's yes. Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. um, what does the gentle leader teach dogs? It, it, it teaches them a lot of, I think, emotional control, self, you know, just self-awareness that they, they need to hang out with us. Mm -hmm. So it it teaches them, it helps to teach them what we want, like how to be good, how to please us. I'm glad you said that. It helps to teach them what we want. Right. Because it's really, it's about us. Mm -hmm. It's not about what the gentle leader actually teaches them. Because if you put the gentle leader on, absent any information from the handler, it's not going to teach the dog anything per se. No. So um, what I really want to convey is that it is part of a training program. It is part of... Uh, is part of the, the the building of the skills that you are going to eventually get to. And it mm-hmm. just makes life easier. It makes yes. it easier to build those skills. Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of times, again, on that on that um, vein of looking for the silver bullet, you know, that magical pill that's going to make everything right, often people will put the gentle leader on or put some sort of mm-hmm. a training aid on and then say, ah, it doesn't work. You know, we get a lot of people who right. have sort of put it on and expected it to do miraculous right. yes. things in and of itself. Yes. And then they get frustrated mm-hmm. when they're not seeing miraculous things. So right. to clarify. Yeah, I remember one of my neighbors once had a dog that was pulling mm-hmm. and uh, they asked me, they said, uh, you know, what can I do? Like, I can't walk my dog yeah. anymore. And, uh, you know, the dog's regulated to the yard. And I said, well, you know, have you tried a gentle leader? Oh, well, we did. And it didn't work. And I, yeah. wait a second here. Wait, like, what do you mean it didn't work? Like mm-hmm. they work. Yes. You know, but you know what they I think they had bought it, didn't know how to fit it, really didn't know what they were doing, didn't seek professional help with it, uh, and put it on the dog. Of course the dog didn't like it and tried to get it off and they just right away abandoned the idea. Uh, so uh, yeah, so I remember thinking, Oh, you know, so I yeah. had to go but you know, it was almost falling on deaf ears. They yeah. already were resigned that it didn't work. Yeah. So it Well, and that's our human nature, right? Mm -hmm. And especially when we're feeling defeated, we don't want, we don't necessarily want to get into this scenario where if we, if we gave it to someone else, they would be able to do it, right? It's so much more comfortable to be able to sit back and think, nope, 
it, it's just not working. It's the tool's fault or it's the dog's fault. Mm-hmm. And, and not that it's the human's fault either. That's not, that's not what I'm trying to suggest at all. It's nobody's fault. Right. It's just you haven't found the right tools yet. Right. You haven't yes. found the right method yet. You haven't done the right things mm-hmm. yet to help this dog understand. But that doesn't mean it can't be done. Right, yes. And I think people, some you know, what they're hoping for is I put this halter on my dog and it it's the magic bullet. Yes. Now my exactly. dog is fixed. Everything's awesome. Yeah. But no, no, you need to train. Yeah. It's a training aid. Yes. Not a training magic right. pill. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we should market that. Right. Training magic pills. Right. Yeah. <laughs> For you and your dog. <laughs> right. dog. Yes. Yes. No. It really it, it doesn't exist. You you're still gonna need to put some mm. elbow grease into this situation, but it's just right. gonna make it easier. And the 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 feeling of defeat it's so all encompassing for so many people, mm-hmm. myself included. You know, when I'm at that point where I'm just like, this isn't working, nothing's working, mm-hmm. this is awful, I just don't want to do it. And then all of a sudden, somebody opens a door and goes, hey, you know what? Here's a little bit of help. Right. I can help you. And that's the gentle leader. And and right away, you're like, there's a little bit of hope. Mm-hmm. So then I think in that, in that same vein, if I were to put the gentle leader on and expect it to do the job for me, that hope gets crushed and my defeat gets built up even more and it feels even worse. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind, if you are going with any sort of a training aid, it's to help. It's Mm -hmm. not to train the dog for you. And some of these, um, some of the alternatives that get marketed out on the, uh, out on the market in the dog market, uh, things like the no pull harness, for Mm. example. Yes. We, uh, I have yet to find a harness that I think is a good option for training. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Talk about some of the reasons that harnesses are not a good option for training. Well, harnesses go down around your dog's chest and that's where your dog's strongest muscles are. Uh, You know, think of a a sled of, you know, huskies Mm -hmm. hitched to a sled or a a horse pulling uh, a buggy. Yeah. Uh, The harnesses all go around their chest. That's a good one. I never think of the horse Mm -hmm. and the buggy, but that's a really good analogy. Right. Yes. Like the harness, you know, they're pulling against their chest with the horse. So that's, that's where we pull against, Uh, you know, imagine if um, somebody strapped a a, a rope around your, around your chest, you would easily be able to just to keep trucking and and pulling the person along. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, and like that gives the dog so much more strength. Yes. And then and it encourages them. Yes. It's like, woohoo, like there's that, you Absolutely. know, that, that opposition reflex. Yeah. It's like something's pushing against me. I'm going to pull against it. Yeah. And a lot of dogs love that. Right. You know, they dig right in and they love it. Mm-hmm. But even if they don't, it's still, it's allowing them to be able to pull. Right. Now there's these no pull harnesses mm-hmm. that have, have come out on the market a lot recently in the yes, last you yes. know, five to 10 years. Right. People there's taking been, advantage of people wanting an easy yes, fix. Yes. Exactly. So again, remembering that there's no magic pill. Right, magic when fix. you see yes. no pull, there's a reason that the dogs don't pull on those harnesses. And it's because it's it stops them from being able to structurally move the way they're intended. Right. And of course- if you put that on one time and go for a walk, it's not going to do any damage to your dog. But long term, if we're using these things on a day to day basis, you know, they're going to do damage to your dog. Right. Structurally, mm-hmm. they are not appropriate. They can do damage. And I have yet to find any sort of harness that I think is a good training option. Mm-hmm. So um, make sure you do your research. You know, yes. if you're going down that road, make sure you do your research because it sounds like a wonderful dream, but really, doing damage long-term to your dog is the last thing anybody ever wants to do, of course. So um, training is the best way. Exactly. Look Mm -hmm. past the hype and do some work with the dog. I don't know why some people are very adverse to using a head halter and and they buy all these different harnesses where we know the head halter works. Yes. And here's the thing. So I think a lot of the time, there's a few reasons that I've come to learn over the years why people don't want the gentle leader when you Mm -hmm. first offer it to them one it looks like a muzzle Mm -hmm. so talk about that well because there is a loop that goes around the dog's nose it can look a little bit like a muzzle Mm -hmm. however the nose loop on a gentle leader is fit very loosely yeah Uh, your dog can still drink take treats 
pick up a tennis ball, bite somebody if they chose. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they have full, you know, they can yawn. They have, you know, they can open their mouth to pant. Yeah. So they have full range of motion with their mouth. Their mouth is still very able to open. Yeah, absolutely. And um, some of the other reasons that people don't immediately jump on the gentle leader. Can you think of any? Well, they don't like that. Their dog doesn't like it when they put it on. Mm, that's yes. a good one. That's, Let's yes. talk about that one because there's things that you can do to help get through this. So just like there's no magic bullet, mm-hmm. you don't want to just slap the gentle leader on and then call it a day. We can spend some time helping our dogs get used to it. And mm-hmm. I often liken it to a new pair of glasses. You know, right. you put the new, a new pair of glasses on your face and it feels awkward and you're, you know, constantly pushing mm-hmm. them up and adjusting them and moving them around until you get used to them. Right. Right. Or so, when we started wearing our masks during COVID. Yeah. Remember when point, we first started one. wearing yeah. our masks? It was like, oh, these are awful. My ears hurt. Yeah. I can't breathe. It just felt weird. My ears never stopped hurting with them. I never. Yeah, I had to find ones that had the best back for my ears. Yeah. But I was uh, recently at the hospital and had to wear a mask. And uh, I, my ears were like, oh, I forgot about this. Uh, like, these ones aren't good for my ears. You probably developed some COVID muscles. Right. And now those are gone. Yes, yes, yes. We calluses behind our ears. <laughs> COVID calluses <laughs> yes. behind our ears. But uh, it's the same thing. Though, like, we did not like wearing those masks because yeah. it was weird on our face. Yeah, and, Like absolutely. the glasses too. And, uh, you know, that's how our dogs feel. They go, you know what? This feels weird. I yeah. don't like it. Yeah, absolutely. So what would you recommend to people who are putting on a gentle leader for the first time? What are some tips that you would give them? Well, we want to have the dog associate it with good things. Mm -hmm. So I usually let the dog sniff it and investigate it, you know, maybe feed the dog a few treats near it. So the dog's like, you know what? I like this near my face. It feels pretty good. And uh, if I have any doubts, I'm going to, uh, you know, talk to a professional and say, you know what? Can you help me with this? Yeah. You know, I'm going to watch videos. We have great videos on our YouTube channel yep. about uh, how, to, how to put a gentle leader on. So if you, uh, you know, check our YouTube channel, uh, there's an excellent video with Steve and his Irish wolfhound mm-hmm. fitting a gentle leader. Yep. Watch it. And don't just watch it once. Watch it two or three times yeah. so you feel very confident uh, that you're going to be putting it on the right way. Yeah. And actually, if you go to our YouTube channel and uh, search for gentle leader, on our YouTube channel, you'll come up with several videos Mm -hmm. because we have several on our YouTube channel. And one of them is all about when my dog hates it. Oh, yes. And working through that because that can be a little bit prohibitive to people. And here's the thing. Dogs are, they'll do what they they find rewarding. Mm -hmm. So if this itchy and annoying thing or, you know, new pair of glasses Mm -hmm. on my face and I'm constantly pushing and rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. Eventually that becomes the habit, Mm -hmm. right? Where I'm always thinking about trying to push and rub. And if if I just leave my glasses alone, eventually I'll get used to them. Yes. So with our dogs, we don't want to let them have that satisfaction of trying to rub their face because Mm -hmm. that can become an obsessive behavior. Right. So I will do a lot of acclimation work with my dogs when Mm -hmm. I'm putting a gentle leader on them. So especially for the, for those early days, Mm -hmm. I don't just slap it on and then go away to the races. I will put it on for good things. So I'll put it on, I'll let them eat their meals. Then I'll take it off after I'll put it on. We'll have a play session Mm -hmm. and then I'll take it off after I'll put it on, feed them some really great treats and then take it off Mm -hmm. after. Sometimes I'll just hold the nose loop out and I'll hold a cookie past the nose loop. So they have to stick their head through the nose loop and then get the cookie. And then as soon as they get the cookie, I pull the nose loop off. So it's all this positive association Mm -hmm. work. Yes. I remember when I worked at uh, uh, Canine Vision, where we trained the guide dogs for the blind, uh, that's how we'd start to teach them to put their harness on. We would hold the harness and, uh, you know, lure them through, lure them through the head part. So it was easy for the uh, visually impaired person. You know, it's hard for them, you know, to see sometimes to get a harness on. So we wanted the dog to almost be able to dress themselves. So, you know, it's kind of like that with the gentle leader. Yeah. Um, the one we had for Cowboy, we called it, we didn't call it the gentle leader. We called it her nose. Okay. I don't know why, but we have, does Cowboy have her nose on? We got to put her nose on. And uh, Did it, you come up with that or did your son? I think it was my son. Yeah. I think my son was, you know, he was two when we got Cowboy. So, you know, he probably just started calling it her nose. And um, that's funny. And even my son at a very young age could hold up Cowboy's gentle leader and say, put your nose on. And she would stick <laughs> her nose through the hole. Oh, that's cute. Like she was like, I love my gentle leader yeah. because it means we're going to have fun together and we're doing stuff. Now, she didn't like it at the beginning. Of course. I, she, uh, you know. And that is normal. Right. That is normal. So, oh, so no, know no that. Dog. If you're, you're yeah. putting on a gentle leader for the first time, they're probably not going to like it right. initially. Yes. And that's okay. I don't think I've ever seen a dog go, oh. 
Hey, you, look Chris, at this thing. Yeah, it's thank great. you for putting this on me, Christine. <laughs> yeah. You're the best. Like oh, most absolutely. dogs look at you in horror and yeah. do this mad flop on the floor and start pawing at their nose. And, yeah. and that's normal. And I think many owners see that and it, it kind of tugs at their heartstrings. Yes. Um, yeah. And they don't want to persevere through it. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And it really is worth persevering through it because it's going to make your life easier in the long run. So um, I find in my experience, if you are quick to stop that fussing, mm-hmm. if you do the acclimation work that we were just talking about mm-hmm. and you're really quick, anytime they go to put a paw up or rub against your leg with it or flop down on the ground and mm-hmm. rub it on the ground, if as soon as they start that action, you shut right. it have, down right have away. your leash attached yep. make sure you put it on and attach your leash immediately exactly mm-hmm. so leash on and then as soon as my dog goes to fuss i just take two hands and just guide upwards mm-hmm. with the gentle leader to stop that fussing mm-hmm. and then as soon as they settle it's just a nice steady pressure that's yes. that's what's nice about the gentle leader is it's not it's not jarring to mm-hmm. the dog so it's a nice steady pressure where you can put that pressure upwards it puts a little pressure behind the head as right. well as to the bridge of the nose just mm-hmm. slightly and then from there as soon as my dog stops fussing I'm going to immediately put the slack back in the leash Mm -hmm. so that they know the pressure's off as soon as you stop Mm -hmm. you know trying to fuss with this thing and then of course once they've settled and they're not trying to fuss with it we're going to get to work right right so I'm going to distract them with skills activities maybe trick training Mm -hmm. I might have it on for just a short period of time in those initial stages and then take it off right Right. after and when I take it off too I don't make a big deal I don't go it's off yay rub 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 I just take it off in a very neutral fashion and hang it up and then I just maybe will ignore the dog for a little bit so they go hmm Gentle leader came off and fun's over. Yeah. And when the gentle leader's on, of course, they're getting engagement and attention and food and all sorts of wonderful things. So very quickly that association flips. Yes. Yeah. We don't want to coddle, take it off and coddle them because then they'll go, oh, it is good when it comes off. Like I can't wait to get this off. So Yeah. yeah, keep that in mind. Another thing to keep in mind when you fit it the neck part around the back of their neck it fits up high kind of just behind that little bump on their head it doesn't sit low and it should be snug snug as you'd wear a belt um you don't want your pants to fall down same with the gentle leader we don't want that back part to slip down uh the reason being is that keeps the gentle leader still on their face yeah if you leave the back neck part loose the whole thing starts to wiggle and kind of just rub around and that makes it more irritating for the dogs Uh, you know when you're wearing a pair of underwear and the elastic's not good and they ride up on your butt i think we've all experienced (laughs) the riding up underwear that's not nice it's not it's irritating and annoying and then you want to fuss with it right yeah or for ladies the bra strap that falls down all the time it's annoying um we got to tighten up that bra strap same with the (laughs) same with our dogs the gentle leader the back part is tight yes but the nose part is nice and loose yeah with the nose part you should be able to pull it right to the end of the dog's nose and even off right if you really did a little push yes i keep just grabbing at my nose no i know you're grabbing (laughs) yes yeah i always call it going through the i always say fit it to where the dog's nose leather starts i like to call it their nose leather nose leather yeah i just think that sounds fun their little nose leather so when you recognize that suddenly it goes from fur to nose leather and that's where the strap should be able to pull to perfect yeah absolutely um so the i hate they i tried a gentle leader with my dog and he hated it part you know that it's going to take some work on your part to make sure that your dog doesn't develop that Mm -hmm. hate for it and again quickly stopping the fussing is really going to help you get to that next stage with the gentle leader so in my experience the other reason that people don't want to go to the gentle leader is that they are concerned that they'll have to use it forever so what Mm. do you say to people when they have that concern it's not a tool that you have to use forever uh it often can get adolescent dogs through that yeah so uh, you know dogs between six and 12 months or you know varies can go through a teenage phase yeah. just like our human teenagers can go through Absolutely. and they can start to really get a little bit testy 
a little bit extra rambunctious. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we might just need it through that period as a helping hand. That was actually where, when I used it with Jaden, mm-hmm. was I finally was like, okay, you know what? This is getting to be a bigger struggle than I want it to be. And mm-hmm. I felt like I was losing ground with relationship because I wasn't able to get his focus in right. busy environments. And the gentle leader just helped him to focus in all. Of, I put it on and I worked through the acclimation. And then I remember coming in for lesson one at McCann's and he was still young at that mm-hmm. point. He was going into the um, uh, life skills one demo mm-hmm. and I used it for the first time, mm-hmm. like outside of the house right. in that demo. And I remember fe- like I, I, I'm welling up right now because I remember feeling so empowered by it. And just right. like all of a sudden, instead of being like, Ooh, like mm-hmm. everything yeah. in the world is more interesting than, than you, all of a sudden he was just focused right? and he was just there and yeah. the distractions were easier for him to ignore because this tool just helped calm right. him a little bit. Yeah. And then of course that wouldn't have been the end of it because if I had said, Oh, look at this good dog in a box, I'm good to go now, which jokingly I call it good dog in a box, but you do have to put it in work. <laughs> so if I had said, I'm good to go now, right. I wouldn't have that wouldn't have maintained, you know, it would have started to deteriorate Mm -hmm. and get worse again. And eventually it would be a useless tool as well. But because in that moment, Jaden was doing a great job of focusing on me and I was able to say, you know what, you're brilliant. Mm -hmm. What a fabulous dog you are. And I was able to build value in that scenario. So that's where the win was for me. And it really was a turning point for mm-hmm. us. And if you've been around McCann's for a while, maybe you've, you've probably read some of the blog posts that I wrote about Jaden, some of the struggles that we had. You know, I learned so much with that dog because mm-hmm. he was an incredibly independent dog. And in hindsight, um, I, I often question whether or not I would have gotten him had I known more because when we went to visit that litter, it was like their seven-week mm-hmm party thing right um it was a week before I went to pick him up to actually bring him home and I got to meet all Mm -hmm. the other people that were taking a puppy from the litter and of course everybody was socializing everybody was playing with the pups and Jaden was the one playing by himself under the deck off away from all the people because and all the other puppies Mm -hmm. because he was just his own man right he was such an independent dog and he was fine with it I mean he liked to be on his own and he liked to be solo until it came to crate training and then he threw me for a loop and we had a whole other Mm -hmm. (laughs) whole other problem to deal with but (laughs) honestly I say that that I might not have gotten him knowing what I know now and that would have been such a a mistake right like incredible mistake because that right you learn I'm getting so emotional much because, you are yes and i loved that right? dog yeah. so much yes when i lost him at 14 it was like a piece of my world was right. gone like he was such a great dog mm-hmm. and it was because it was because he was not a gimme dog right you know yep. when i was sorry for Some, getting know, emotional often, here yeah, we the do har- about sometimes our, dogs. our hardest dogs yeah. become the most special dogs yes mm-hmm. because i earned it and by the time we got through those struggles by the time we got to a point where I thought okay we've got it we're Mm -hmm. a team we've got this great relationship we're going to start competing in things now it was like such a triumph yes you know and it endeared him so much more to me knowing that Mm -hmm. I had had to figure him out and I had had to think outside the box and you know we all know real learning happens outside of your comfort zone right yep so sometimes you have to be in that struggle defeat state in order to make progress right and he helped me make that progress and he set me up for a lifetime of getting dogs and going that's not an insurmountable problem I'll fix that. Right. I'll fix that. I'll fix that. Oh, that's going to be hard. I don't know how I'm going to fix that, but I know I'm going to fix exactly, that. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with, with being a dog trainer, you never know everything. Yeah. It's a constant, that's a fact. it's a constant learning circle yeah. being a dog trainer. Um, every dog presents new issues, new methods, thinking out of the box, yeah. you know, trial and error sometimes. And that's one of the things I love about being a dog trainer. Absolutely. Every dog is different yeah. and you have to think through it and train the dog in front of you. Yes. Um, you know, I, I look at the dog and think, what is going to be best for this dog? Yeah. And yeah, like I, 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 that's one thing I don't like hearing is people saying, oh, I've trained dogs before. I, you know, I know how to do this. And it's like, no, like how could you ever say something like that? There's, Every dog is different. Absolutely. Every day I learn something new. Yep. 
Yes. Yeah. It's so amazing. Like where else could, you, where else would you get to do that? Right. Yeah. I mean, probably working with humans too. Right. Yeah. Probably presents such a variety of things that you're constantly. Right. On the move, looking for new solutions. Yes, yes. Wow. Like often our dog is our teacher. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, incredible. Yes, yes. Incredible. and I love working with students' dogs because you hear about, okay, well, this is their situation at home and this is what they need the dog to do. And, you know, so then we have to sit and brainstorm. How can we, let's look at it from the dog's point of view and how can we achieve that? Absolutely. So it's, it's really, it's a puzzle. Yes. It's a puzzle that yeah. we put together every day. I love that. And and um, someone else has used the analogy of a puzzle before within our staff and talking about how if there's a piece missing, you can't see the full image. So right. mm-hmm. make sure you're thorough with each of those pieces. Right. And so, um, I mean, that sort of brings me back to the gentle leader and some of the questions that are common that we get about it. And one of the really common questions that we get is at what age can I put the gentle leader on? So what would you, how would you answer that? Well, a lot of it depends on... Uh, the dog itself. Right. Um, you know, if, if I have a four month old puppy that needs a gentle leader, then I'm going to put yeah. it on at four months. And I, I would say generally that's about the age. However, there's some puppies that need it earlier, three months. If yeah. you got like a, a giant breed that's really rowdy, you know, maybe you need it earlier. Or sometimes I'll say, you know what, this dog is going to need a gentle leader. I'm going to acclimize it now yeah, before before the dog is an adolescent and right. now I'm really fighting putting it on with the dog. Yeah. Not fighting, just, you know, people can, you know, they understand what I mean, but that, yeah. that, you know, more than it needs to be. So, you know, if I recognize, you know, say, uh, say I, um, a small lady or comes into our class and she's got like a dog that's, you know, going to be big, like possibly a Cane Corso or a St. Bernard and I can see it's rowdy, might be, you know what, let's put it on it now while yeah. it's small because it's it's easier for a puppy to get used to something often than an adolescent dog. Yeah, mm. absolutely. And why not make your life easier? Right. Right? Why not? Why struggle with the dog? Why, right. Yeah, why struggle against all that pressure yes. on their neck? The gentle leader just takes that and makes it into a situation where you can coach the dog. Right. And you can build that value and then you can start to wean away from it. Right. So, Interestingly enough, I want to get to talking about weaning away, but there's this thing on the table here. When we came in here, there was this silver tin on the table. I hoped it was candy. I hoped it was candy as well. But then when we reached inside, it wasn't candy. But there's some things in the tin. And I think you it's think- meant for us. Oh. So I think the goal is to reach in the tin and pull out a piece of paper, which happens to be a question. So oh. we've um, we've organized. It's some... not a coupon for dinner. It might be. Let me read it. No, no, no. It's a question. No. It's a question. Okay. So we've decided to <laughs> add to our um, to our segment here by reading some of the real questions that we get on our YouTube. Oh, channel. awesome! Oh, so, that, that's fun. Yes, yeah. yeah. So oh, I've, yeah, yeah. I've or definitely question drop here. drop questions in our comment box too on our podcast. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And and you know who knows we might answer your question. We would love to get some questions about the content that we talk about yes. on our podcast. Mm-hmm. So please feel free to drop those in the comment section. You can do that on YouTube and some of the Audible um, podcast platforms. So we will happily get to that. Mm -hmm. So I've got a question here from our YouTube channel from uh, 369EFV. (laughs) So that's not very descriptive. I'm not sure uh, what the name is. Mm -hmm. So we'll just go ahead with the question. My dog pulled through the halty head halter and looked like a rabid maniac by the end of the walk. (laughs) That's a good description. (laughs) Sometimes they do look like rabid maniacs. Yes, yes. Tongue hanging out, frenzied eyes, got turned off walking the fool because of it. Indoors, he's one of us, an off-leash second to none, but on leash, a prick. I'll just read that. I wasn't going to read that, but I'll just read that because it's Mm. part of the actual question. So Mm. honesty in all things. (laughs) I've tried every non-pull lead on the market and training techniques. He's just not good on the lead. So there is another word there that I'm actually going to skip over and not read because I think it's a little bit too strong language. Uh, And this is a family podcast. This is a family podcast. Yes. So we used one of them, but not the other. So here's the thing about the gentle leader, as we talked about, it's not going to solve any problem. No. So if you think I'm going to slap this gentle leader on and then go out in the real world and walk with my dog and everything's going to suddenly be 
hunky dory, mm -hmm. you're sadly in for more defeat because right. yes. that's not the case. No, it, it needs training. Absolutely. Yes. So what what would you suggest to this person that that wants to put the gentle leader on and go out for a walk and have it fix their problem? Right. Well, it looks like this person is looking for a quick fix. Yep. I'm going to suggest that they need to put some work into the dog. Yeah. So they need to enroll in training classes or, um, you know, in person or online. Uh, they need to, or even do a private lesson with mm -hmm. the help of a, a professional to help acclimate the dog to the gentle leader. Yes. It sounds like they just quickly put it on. Who knows if it was fit properly yeah. and off they went. And the dog uh, was probably stressed out. Maybe yeah. a little bit frightened, like what, what's happened? What's happened to me? Uh, so you do need to take the time to help yes. your dog. Absolutely. And I, I want to thank this person for the yes. question no, no, because that's it's a, it's it's a great a, opportunity for us to talk about right. it. And it's a great question. Yeah, it, absolutely. I'm sure that happens to probably a lot of people. It does. Yes. So I honestly would say start in your backyard, start in your kitchen. You know, if you've been struggling with walks and your dog has gotten accustomed to the rehearsal of pulling, because let's face it, what we do is what become, becomes habit. And that yes. is true for our dogs as well. Mm -hmm. So if every single morning you open the crate door and your dog comes out and gives a big stretch, like some of that is a physical need to stretch and some of that is habit because mm -hmm. it's been rehearsed over and over again. Right. If you go out with your dog on a walk and they pull you for the whole walk, yeah, some of that is that they want to get to where they're going faster and mm -hmm. it's reinforcing for them. And to you're do that. following them along. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But some of that is that it's been rehearsed and yeah. it's become habit. Yeah. So putting on a gentle leader and expecting that to change the habit mm -hmm. is, is short sighted. It's right. not going to work. Yes. However, if you decide to take, it, it takes an average. This is, this is funny because a lot of people are surprised by this. It takes an average of six weeks to change a habit. So mm -hmm. even if you took a fraction of that, so even if you took, say you took two weeks from that, mm -hmm. and instead of putting the gentle leader on and going for a walk, mm -hmm. you put the gentle leader on and did some walking training in your kitchen, mm -hmm. around the kitchen. Yeah. And you spent a couple of days doing that and the dog started building value for walking with mm -hmm. you and paying attention, you know, get your, get some really good treats in there, help them understand mm -hmm. that Yes, it's, it's valuable to you and it's reinforcing to you to be out at the end of the leash pulling, but guess what? I'm going to counter that by saying it's more valuable for you to be at my side and be close to me. And if you do that, you're going to get all these wonderful goodies. Mm -hmm. So the dog's probably going to be able to handle that in the kitchen pretty quickly because there's not a lot of competing motivators. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of distractions right. out there. So then you go to the backyard and there's a few more distractions, mm -hmm. but now your dog has this new history of saying, oh, it was really valuable for me mm -hmm. to hang out at your side. And now, so now you're in the backyard and there's a little bit more in terms of distraction and you do the same thing with the dog. You say, this is a really valuable position to be in. Mm -hmm. I'm going to reward you for being in at my side. The gentle leader helps you get that success. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I'm going to go to the front yard. And I'm going to do the same thing. And then from there, I might go out to the sidewalk. Right. And then from there, I might try to get to the end of the block. And then I might try to get around the block. You know, it's not about putting on the tool, expecting this perfect quick fix right. and maintaining that need to go for mm -hmm. a walk with your dogs. I mean, truly, walks are not great exercise for dogs anyway. No. So no. find another way to exercise them in that, you know, three, two to three week period that right. you're taking to, mm -hmm. act, to help your dog mm -hmm. learn how to walk nicely and spend the time teaching your dog how to walk nicely and then go and attempt the walk right. again. Yes. And I guarantee you, you're going to have a different outcome, but it does need to have some work. It does need to have some effort put mm -hmm. into it. And there's no quick fix. Right. There's really not yes. any good quick fixes in dog training and no. those, those magic pills, very few and far between. Right. Yes. <laughs> so yes. No, that was a great, that's a yeah. great question. And you know, that's, you know, people get frustrated and, but yeah, I think they need to understand it's not like a harness. You just slap on a dog exactly. that you buy at the pet store. It, it's, it's a great training tool, but it's a training tool. Yes. Not, yeah, you need to train with it. Exactly. You know what? I really liked. You like the questions? Reaching into the question How can bank? I pick the next one? <gasps> you can. I won't be able to read it though, because I go. don't have my glasses. Uh oh. <laughs> Try okay. to read it. See what Let you can me see, see if I can actually read this. <laughs> I might be able to if the font's big enough. I don't oh, think wait. it's very big. Uh, it's from Chelsea. Oh, Chelsea Ripley, 2451. Okay. Okay. Gentle leader or halty. Both pretty much look the same. 
difference Ooh, is the is difference only the brand or is there something oh, else? I love this question because this a is really actually good something question. we should yes, talk yes. about. So, yeah, thank uh, you, Chelsea. Gentle Leader versus the Halty. So we are not sponsored by Gentle Leader, but we would tell you Gentle Leader over and above any of the other head mm-hmm. hunters on yes. the market. And there's yes. a couple of reasons for that. One is that it has a locking mechanism. So the, the clip that goes under the chin mm-hmm. where the two pieces meet it actually locks in place. So yes. you can get a solid fit with a the gentle leader. A precise fit, yes. With some of the other um, head halters, first off, some of them will attach from the back. Some of them will attach from weird places that mm-hmm. really don't help us control our dog. Right. Um, some of them attach at the same place as the gentle leader under the chin. However, yes. they're loosely fit. Yes, the halty has no, it's just kind of like yeah. a floating thing. So it can... Exactly. Yes. And it actually will constrict. So when you put pressure on the halty and mm-hmm. pull, it actually constricts and does close the mouth yes. a little bit and does tighten around the head, mm-hmm. which the gentle leader doesn't do. And we right. like that the mm-hmm. gentle leader doesn't do that. We right. don't yes. want it to constrict. We want it to just help guide the dog. Right. Another reason that we love the gentle leader is the weaning off point. Talk about the weaning off point. Well, eventually, if you want to try not to use the gentle leader, what you can do with it is you can pull the nose part off. So you slip the nose part off and then you attach, You there's a big, there'll be the hanging part at the bottom, but you can uh, clip that up under to, there's a D-ring you can clip it to. Perfect. And now the dog still has the high up snug collar of the gentle leader behind its head, Mm -hmm. but the nose loop is off, but it's there in case you need it. So it's a great kind of just weaning off point because there's a little bit of a a feeling difference, but not a whole lot all at once. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that is a nice thing to have because for those of us that don't plan to use this tool forever, and just to be clear. You can use it forever. Exactly. There's nothing wrong with that. Cowboy loved it. And you know what? She continued to wear it all her life for walks. And uh, yeah, yeah. You don't have to wean away from this tool if you don't want to. You know, Mm. if you're you're instructor Swanee's size and you have a great Dane, that gentle leader is probably going to come in handy for the entirety of that dog's life. And there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Mm -hmm. But if you do want to wean away from it, the gentle leader has that ability, whereas some of the other head halters do not. Right. And the head, the the halty is actually fit so loose that if the dog pulls backwards, it can pull out of the halty. Right. And get right off its head. Yeah. Which is exactly why it has a safety strap that clips onto the collar as well. So that if your dog does slip the tool, you don't end up losing your dog, which is great but it points out a flaw in right. the tool itself to begin with. So if a gentle leader is properly fit, your dog will not be able to no, pull out of it. Even if they laid down and you were talking to your neighbor and they nose and they use their paw to get the nose piece off, mm-hmm. they're still attached by yes. the collar. Yeah, absolutely. Whereas a halty, the dog can pull right off its whole head. Yes. Yes, and you could lose your dog. So, you know, especially if you have a dog that, uh, you know, maybe is a little bit reactive, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you definitely want the gentle yes. leader. It's it's securely fit on their head. Yeah, and let's face it. I mean, we, we're using gentle leaders with the dogs that are the hyper bouncy ones. So, right, yes. You know, uh, th- mm-hmm. those are the dogs that we need to make sure that we have good, solid control. With. Right. The, the halty also has an extra strap that comes across the chin. Okay. A little yeah. bit. And, you know, that's just more more strappy. Yeah. You know, they don't need uh, that many straps more on strapping. them. strapping. Yes. <laughs> also, too, the gentle leaders that we sell through um, our website mm-hmm. have a buckle clip, except they for do. the smalls. The, yeah, the mediums and the larges. Yes. Have a buckle clip, whereas... At the pet store, when you purchase a gentle leader, or even if you purchase a halty, they have one of those plastic snap yeah. clips. And plastic's not always the best secure. That's true. Um, especially if you have a big hairy dog and maybe you think you got it snug up, but maybe there was some hair in there. It could yeah. easily open up and then it would come off. Yeah. We find that such an important safety feature that mm-hmm. we actually have the, the company that makes gentle leader. We have them make us specially designed gentle leaders with that buckle for yes. security with the medium, large and the extra large, anything that's bigger than a small dog. Yes. We want to make sure that we have a good solid metal buckle. Right. On, yes. So. And, and it is, it takes a bit more to do up, mm-hmm. uh, not as you know convenient as just snapping, but it, it gives you peace of mind. Yes. It's like, this is on my dog. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Yeah. Plastic can break. Yeah. It can. Absolutely. So uh, a couple of other safety things about the gentle leader. So first off, we talked about making sure your dog isn't fussing with it because that's Mm -hmm. another thing that will occasionally happen with the gentle leader is Mm -hmm. if you have a dog that's either really pulling into it 
or they're really fussing with it, it'll mm-hmm. start to wear their nose because of course oh, right. yes. it's yes. a nylon material. So the um, the newer gentle leaders are a softer nylon mm-hmm. webbing, but they're still, they're still nylon. And if right. you're, if you're rubbing that constantly mm-hmm. on a thin part of hair, it's going to cause some wear and some yes. frustration with yeah. the dog. And, and so. some dogs just have sensitive faces yes. too. You might find breeds with uh, like my Saluki had yeah. a very fine little face and, uh, you know, it could cause some wear there. Yeah. What I did to remedy that was I made the gentle leader nose loop softer by, I went to, uh, Walmart and, uh, in the shoe, the, sh- like, like the shoe cushioning section. Like the pharmacy where there's like. Yeah, the pharmacy shoe part. Stuff. Yeah, orthotic stuff. You could buy moleskin, Dr. Scholl's moleskin and, uh. I could cut it and it's got sticky on one side and it's this soft, I guess you would put it on calluses or bunions or or in your shoe to cushion areas, but it also molds perfectly on the gentle leader strap and it just gave a nice cushiony softness to it. And self-adhesive, right? And self-adhesive, yep. And uh, it, it was perfect to wrap around that gentle leader. It gave it a nice soft little convenient thing and it, it, it it looked great on cowboy. You know, it fitted well. It, uh, it's, and it prevented any abrasion that it made on her face. Perfect. So that's another another good reason not to expect the gentle leader to do the work for you because if the dog is really pulling into the gentle leader, it's going to wear on their face a little bit in that situation that you're talking about with Cowboy with her very thin coat. Yes, she's like a, kind of like a greyhound type. Yeah. Yes, and she had Saluki. very fine, thin skin yeah. on all over her body. Um, so even though I was doing Desert the training breeds, on... right? So they don't need that right, warmth, yes, that's for yes, sure. Yes, yes, so um, uh, even though I was training her at the same time, I could see that it was a little bit yeah. abrasive. And it was, Cowboy's been passed for a long time, so it was one of the older gentle leaders, I oh, think, okay. that, you know, had a more abrasive feel yeah. to it. Yes, yeah. so... Uh, you know, so I just softened it up with some mole skin. So, um, Perfect. and I recommend that to students. Now we get breed, you know, Vizlas or Weimaraners, like very fine skin yeah. breeds. And I say, if there's any irritation on the nose, just get some mole skin. And here's a good tip. Uh, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Um, so any other safety elements that you would think about with the gentle well, leader? Some people do think that maybe it might hurt their dog's neck. Yes. What do you think of that? Thought. Yes. So there's no... There's no evidence of this out there. So in my uh, in my estimation, that's probably one marketing company that wants you to buy a harness trying to bash another marketing company that wants you to buy a gentle leader. So, um, <laughs> right, yes. The one thing that I will say, though, with the gentle leader is we never put it on a leash that's longer than six feet. Right. So if you're doing long line work, et cetera, the gentle leader is not something that you're going to attach your long line to mm-hmm. because I could see that hurting your dog. Right, neck. yes. So, for example, if you've got a 20-foot long line and your dog is running from one end of the long line to the other, they can work up quite a head of steam. And if right. then they suddenly get stopped, by this thing twisting their head back. Yes. I'm quite that certain could, that, yes. that you're right. That yes. could hurt your dog's neck, but that's not how it's intended to be used. No, no. So that's like saying, you know, I drove into the wall with my car and and now I'm hurt and that shouldn't have happened right. because the car should have protected me from the wall. Well, you know, it, it's not being used properly. Mm-hmm. It's not meant to be driven into walls. So let's, um, let's think about using it properly. Using it on a six foot leash, of yep. course, is going to be the biggest safety element, right. I would yes. say, because the dog's not getting up enough oomph right. that if they do hit the end mm-hmm. of that six foot leash and their head gets turned back, it's not going to do damage right. to yes. them. And so. often too, we have our leash gathered up a little bit, so yes. it's not even going to, yeah. going to be six feet. Yeah. I have looked because that's been, uh, a, a, I, I'm going to call it a myth because I've not found any evidence and right. I've not I've not um, found vets that are willing to right yes. say definitively yes. this is the studies that right. have this information has come from so right, yeah. um, I'm going to call it a myth that the gentle leader does damage to their neck right, when yes used yes properly, I've never so. had a, a vet mention that to me yeah I've, I've never looked. had even an animal chiropractor mention that to me yeah yeah and I've it's, looked hard because we hear that one quite right, a bit it, and it's, it's like you know what say your source because right, I've we used need sources. this tool a yeah. lot mm-hmm. and I've recommended this tool to a lot of students who have been really, really, really happy Mm -hmm. with the leg up that it's given them. And I would not want to take that away from them 
But I also want to make sure that if I'm recommending something, I'm not erroneously recommending something that's unsafe. And right, I have yes, not found yes. any evidence yeah. that points to the, and the, the gentilator has been on the market for a long oh, time. Oh, a long, long that, time. I mean, yes. longer than I've been on the market. <laughs> longer than I've been a dog <laughs> trainer. That's on the market, sure. everyone. She's on the market. <laughs> I'm for sale. <laughs> but yeah, like I've never, I've never, um, found anything in all that time. And right, the gentle yes. leader has been on the market for a very, very long time and helped a lot of right. dogs. Um, one other thing though, that is unfortunate about the gentle leader is that it's not the right tool for every dog. Right. And that's because there's some breeds that don't have the nose for it. Right. So, the flat faced breeds. Yeah. What are yes. some of the breeds that you would avoid using a gentle leader with? Um, a Pekingese. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many Pekingeses I've seen in the entirety of my career okay. at McCann's? I honestly, I don't even think I can think. I can think of one. Of a Pekingese that I have helped train. Yeah. I've seen a few in confirmation, but right? it's just not a breed it's we see a lot of. It's not a breed of. we see a lot of. No. no. I, we did have a Pekingese in our class once. Okay. Um, and we see, we have 500 dogs come through yeah. our facility a week. They're not breed, And we just breed. celebrated our 40th anniversary. So, I, I mean, this is not a small sample size. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what? That You know what, Shannon? That's your next breed, That's Pekingese. My, I'm going to get a Pekingese. You're going to get a Pekingese. <laughs> <laughs> but you're absolutely right. They don't have the nose for it, No, no. Some of those soft palate breeds, if you put pressure on that little bridge of a nose that they mm. do have, it's going to actually cut off their air. Right. So we, we want to warn you yeah. against that. Even it's like not French, a safe tool. French bulldogs. Frenchies. Bulldogs. Pugs, any of the, the they're called Shih Tzu's, yeah. breeds. So any of those smushed noses. Austin Terriers. Bulldogs. Yeah. Swannies. <laughs> The odd one does. So we had a boxer in class not too long ago, and I thought, you know what? It's got a pretty good bridge yeah. of nose there. And uh, yeah, so it did fit. But yep. um, yeah, like pugs, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a no. pug that could wear one. No, um, no. Like, and a I true, would like a true like English bulldog either. Like yeah. they're very they flat face. Yeah, they don't have enough nose right. for it yes. to support it. And then so, you're pushing on that soft palate. Yeah. So good. if you're thinking of using a gentle leader and you haven't got your dog yet, then yeah, choose a dog with a long snout. There you go. <laughs> that's the solution long snout gentle leader right yes all right so i, I mean in conclusion like this is it's a fabulous tool we love this tool it's going to help with your training and there's so much magic surrounding that empowerment so mm -hmm. there's no magic pill in dog training but there's magic in feeling like you're getting on top of your dog training and there's magic in feeling that relationship blossom right with yes. your wonderful four-legged yes. family member yeah you don't want to be I don't want to feel adversarial with my dogs. Yes, exactly. And the gentle leader makes you not feel adversarial. Yeah, uh, yes. yeah that's yeah. a really, and, and really as, good point. As your dog too, you want your your leader to be calm and confident and happy. Uh, you know, imagine going into work every day and your boss is frustrated and yelling and you know pushing you around and. No, that's not fun. Yeah. I would rather my boss give me the tools I need. Exactly. And help me through something. Empower you to do the right thing. Right. Yes. I love it. Yeah. One thing I noticed too is uh, when I'm traveling, you, you see different pockets of what dogs are wearing. And uh, often when I'm traveling, I'll, you know, I'll be in a city and it's like, there's a lot of dogs wearing gentle leaders in this city. And I think, oh, that's, you know, yeah. 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 So I think it's neat to see, you know, to travel and see, like, I notice um, where I live now, I see lots of gentle leaders. So yeah. it's like, you know, great. And I that's think awesome. That's, I think that's our influence. Right. To be yes. honest, like yes. we really, we service the community and we love this tool. We recommend it mm -hmm. a lot, not to every dog, right? but Let's face it, it's it's a challenge to have a young dog and to be learning how to train that young dog while that young dog has its own agenda. Right. I always joke mm -hmm. that like if you were learning to do heart surgery, for example, the person on the table wouldn't be going, oh, <laughs> I want to go over there and that side of the right, operating right, room. Leave right. me alone. You know, they're... Yes. they're <laughs> <laughs> Probably a cadaver too, you know, if you're just learning. Right. So I mean, realistically, we're already behind the eight ball when we're new and training mm -hmm. a young puppy. Right. So whatever we need to help us. And of course, if you have a dog that you have great focus with without the gentle leader, then it's not something that you might ever need to use. Right. But if you need a little bit of help with focus or strength. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or a great another analogy. I wouldn't want to learn how to ride a horse 
on a oh, on a horse that's never yeah. ever had a person yeah. ride it before. Could I'm, you imagine? It's learn, like no. Here, yeah, how about this? I'm going to learn how to ride a horse. So now they're loading me into those starting blocks oh, right. at the derby, right? And yes. off I go. go right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my fun. goodness. But that's, you know what? It's funny, but that's how I feel for some people. Yes, it's they, true. they like, I want to learn how to train my dog. And they come in with this bucking bronco <laughs> of a dog. And it's like, oh, like we need to help the person. Yes. <laughs> yes. Go learn how to ride a horse. We'll stick you on the rodeo right, horse. Yes. Stay on for eight seconds and you're good. Right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. So, yeah. And, and unfortunately, with a dog, often that's, you know, we, we're learning how to train dogs yes. on Absolutely. these bucking broncos. So let's, make, let's make it easier. Yes. Well, and like we said, every dog is different. So even if you've trained dogs before, sometimes you're still, you right. feel like you're on that bucking bronco trying right. to figure out yes. how to yes. <laughs> tame it. Well, I, I can use like my, my parents as an example. My parents are... Uh, have put all kinds of high, high end obedience titles on their dogs. My dad's an obedience judge, but they're in their 80s now. Uh, you know, if they got a new puppy, I think they would use a gentle yeah. leader because yep. they'd say, you know what? We're 80. We, yeah. we, you know, we want peace. We're not as strong as we used to be. Let's make it easier. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And there's nothing wrong with making D your life easier. No. I love it. No. Yes. Well, on that note, I am Instructor Shannon. Instructor Swanee. Happy training, everybody. The McCann Dogs Podcast is brought to you by McCann Professional Dog Trainers. We help dog owners to have a well-behaved, four-legged family member. Please give us a call at 905-659-1888 or visit us at mccandogs.com. Happy training!